Greetings and welcome to another lecture in introductory psychology. This one involves prenatal development. Now prenatal development is the development that occurs before birth. That's what prenatal means. So what we're going to do basically is take a very quick tour, like all of these are very quick and very superficial, through the nine months of human prenatal development. Or 40 weeks, by the way, which helps to remind people that that uh, weeks, four weeks are not necessarily in a month. <laughs> that a lot, most months are a little longer than that. At any rate, so this whole thing begins when woman ovulates and male ejaculates in or near her vagina, so that the sperm go wiggling. I mean, you've seen probably seen these films. If you're not, you're on YouTube. Go watch one. Okay, Miracle of Life. Blah blah blah. Now, once the egg has been fertilized. And by the way, fertilized eggs, once they are fertilized by a sperm, they develop a very, very hard, well, shell is the wrong word, but they, their, their outer surface becomes impermeable to more sperm because otherwise you would wind up with way too many chromosomes. But that fertilized egg uh, begins to travel down the fallopian tubes and eventually to, theoretically anyway, implant into the uterus. Now... This first stage in prenatal development is called the germinal stage. For those of you who are wondering about where's the trimesters, trimester is simply three months. That's, that's a whole different way of looking at these stages. This is a more medical, scientific way, perhaps. Well, the first stage is the germinal stage, which is the first two weeks after conception. It's so-called because one of the technical terms for sperm and egg cells are germ cells. Not because little kids are germy, but because basically uh, from a germ cell they divide like crazy, which can be said of a fertilized egg. It does indeed do that. Now, instead of saying fertilized egg, most medical people tend to use the term zygote. Zygote basically means fertilized egg. Here's a very interesting fact, by the way. The vast majority of zygotes do not survive the first week or so. They don't make it out of the germinal stage. There have been suggestions, and there's some data, that roughly 60 to 80 percent of fertilized eggs never make it through the end of this stage. That they die, or they, 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 they simply do not make it. And of those percentage that do make it to the end of the germinal stage, about 20% of those, about one in five of those, will eventually spontaneous abort, uh, which is called a miscarriage. The technical term for a miscarriage is spontaneous abortion. That's an awful lot of fertilizing going on. It's a little startling. But there does appear to be a whole lot of fertilizing going on that does not necessarily result in a noticeable pregnancy. Because in order for a, a woman to know she's pregnant, and and depending on your definition of pregnant in order for pregnancy to occur, this zygote needs to travel down the fallopian tube into the uterus and implant itself into the uterine wall. Now, every month is part of uh, the female's menstrual cycle. What happens is that uterine lighting builds up. It builds into blood vessels and stuff to make a hospitable environment for any potential zygotes that may come traveling down the pike, as it were. And, of course, if there is no implantation or the implantation is not done correctly, then that lining is shed. Now, you've probably seen commercials for pregnancy tests. What those pregnancy tests look for are special hormones that are released when a zygote successfully implants itself into the uterine lining. As soon as the zygote gets into the uterine lining, it sends a signal essentially saying, I'm here, don't have a period. <laughs> And so therefore, when the body gets that signal, it will therefore not cause the lining to be sloughed off in a menstrual cycle. And therefore, the, the, the pregnancy test can check for that. There will be a limit, however, as to how soon after pregnancy a woman would be able to tell if she's pregnant. At the moment, most pregnancy tests say that you should basically take the pregnancy test at about the same time that your period would start if you were not pregnant, which generally is about two weeks after conception, which generally is the end of this germinal stage. Because before then, you can't really be sure that there's enough of that hormone for the pregnancy test to, uh, to measure it, to be able to find it. Now, as part of this whole signal from the zygote that I'm here, and apparently, as I mentioned, a whole lot of zygotes either don't successfully send the signal, they don't implant, or something else goes on that prevents them from doing so. The zygote will begin to form a connection between itself and the woman's body, which is called a placenta. 
Now the placenta, we, we all carry evidence of where the placenta attached itself to both us and to our mothers in the form of the umbilicus, also known as the belly button. Interestingly enough, all mammals have belly buttons, with the possible exception of the monotremes, of the, of the mammals that are hatched from eggs, the platypus, the echidna, that sort of thing. Birds don't have belly buttons, and I would assume that fish and reptiles don't either, or amphibians. Because what happens with birds is they are actually connected to the yolk in the egg. Human eggs do have yolk, but they don't have very much. They only need enough basically to survive until this placenta is formed, so they have very little. But of course, chicken eggs, for instance, have a huge amount of yolk. The little tiny embryo is connected to that. And in the last day or two before that chick hatches, what happens is the yolk is basically engulfed in the abdominal cavity of that bird so it can survive off that yolk for the first day or two or three after it hatches. So they might have a seam, I don't know, but I do know that mammals have belly buttons. I found belly buttons on dogs and cats and even on dolphins. They have a round flat scar about where you'd expect. And the placenta is then used to send uh, nourishment in from the mother's body and waste out from the zygote slash embryo slash fetus's body. And uh, after a woman gives birth, if she gives birth vaginally to a baby, she also then has to give birth to the placenta, which comes out a lot easier because it doesn't have any bones in it. Also in cesarean sections where doctors will go in through the, uh, the uh, abdominal wall, they also have to remove the placenta afterwards. You can't leave it in there. And make sure that it's all removed because any bit of the placenta left behind can cause uncontrollable bleeding and can lead to infection or death. Not good. So, we're past the germinal stage. We're two weeks after conception. That zygote has implanted itself. And it's been dividing like crazy, by the way, uh, through all through this point. At two weeks after conception, we, we, start, we begin what's called the embryonic stage. Because at this point, the zygote becomes an embryo. That makes sense. Okay, so the embryonic stage starts about two weeks after conception. And I actually have a diagram here. There are a number of places on the web where you can find these sorts of diagrams. Uh, this one's from babycenter.com, simply because I found it to be a really nice, accurate diagram. And you'll notice that, first of all, th th that this zygote slash embryo at this point is so small that you pretty much can't see it. It's located in there. It's basically a ball of cells. It doesn't look anything like any sort of creature you've ever seen. It's a ball of cells. But this also shows the yolk sac, that it was present in the fertilized egg, the placenta, which is beginning to form, the amniotic sac that will eventually encase the embryo and fetus and such like, the wall of the uterine cavity. So, so, I, mean, I mean, very, very, very early. And yes, we're talking ball of cells. The cells, in many cases, haven't even begun to differentiate yet. By the way, cells that haven't differentiated right at the beginning of this embryonic stage are called stem cells because they can become anything. And by the way, if you hear people talk about embryonic stem cells, they're almost certainly wrong because stem cells generally are, are, are best at about seven days after conception, which means that they would be called zygotic stem cells, but that doesn't roll off the tongue quite as much. And by the way, also, we're beginning to be able to create stem cells from adult cells. So that's a whole other very interesting evolving as we speak topic, so I won't immortalize it on this particular video. But this gives you an idea of where we're at at the beginning of the embryonic stage. Now, by the end of the embryonic stage, things have changed quite a bit. Basically, we start out with a ball of cells. In fact, I'm, going to, I'm just going to show it to you. We start out with a ball of cells, and we end up with something that is beginning to look, if not exactly human, at least it looks like some sort of quadruped. But you can also see many of the same things here. The yolk sac has diminished completely. We see the umbilical cord here connecting, and then the placenta here. And we see the beginning of things like where you see where the head is going to be, and the limbs are beginning to form. So we've gone from a ball of cells to that. Okay. Granted, it's still very tiny. Okay. It's very small. A woman may or may not be beginning to actually show signs. But you also have to realize that this is only eight weeks after conception. So it's still very, very early, and that's a problem. 
because so much happens during this embryonic stage. So much happens. We're going from a ball of cells to at the end of it, six weeks later, we have sort of a blueprint. We, we can see where everything is going to go, even if it's not there yet. We can see where the head and the brain and the spinal cord are, even if they haven't fully formed, the lungs, the heart, the blood vessels, even if they haven't fully formed. We can see where the arms and legs and hands and the, the, the gut and the reproductive organs and everything. You can see where they're going to be, even though they're not really formed yet. We have a plan. And the big problem is, if a mistake is made during this embryonic stage, if there is any sort of problem with the genes, or there is any sort of problems with the environment, if a teratogen, some, some sort of substance, chemical comes in that can cause changes in this blueprint here that we have, you're going to run into real problems. As I mentioned before, 60 to 80 percent of fertilized eggs don't make it out of the germinal stage. 20% of those that make it that far don't make it out of the embryonic because of things that can go wrong or things that can all of a sudden become important that maybe in the germinal, the ball of cell stays was not important. It could be illnesses that women have, that women contract, that can cause problems here. Type of measles, for instance, a woman catches measles during this period or a little bit later, you could wind up with a baby that's blind or deaf or both. Medications during this period, either legal ones, over-the-counter medications, tobacco, alcohol, you name it, it can cause problems here. And that itself is a problem because even by the end of this embryonic stage, a whole lot of women don't necessarily know that they're pregnant. A lot of women have irregular periods. This stage begins two weeks after ovulation. Well, if a woman is irregular, she may not be expecting to have a period and may not even, it may not even cross her mind that she could be pregnant. And she may go on living her life the usual way that she does. So then maybe another four or five weeks later, she may realize that, oops, I skipped a period. There's women who skip periods all the time when they're not pregnant. And so a lot of women wind up living their normal lives which is not necessarily a good way to live if the woman is in the embryonic stage of pregnancy. She's carrying an embryo. So there are many, many, many problems that can happen. There are actually doctors that suggest that if a woman thinks that she may be pregnant, she should live her life as if she were. No alcohol, no tobacco, taking vitamin supplements, n uh, all the rest of the, the things that you, people do to ensure that that zygote, that embryo, has the, the best chance to develop properly, which for a lot of women would be very limiting, but there we are. So the embryonic stage ends at eight weeks. At that point, we enter the fetal stage. Now, this is the longest stage, and basically what we have at the beginning is we have a blueprint, a teeny tiny little like model, and what happens during the stage, the first half of the stage, the model is built upon. So by the end, of say the second trimester, the second three months. Everything that is going to be there is there. The lungs are there, the heart is there, the digestive tract is there, the brain is there, the nervous system is there, the eyes and senses are there, everything is there. Now it may not be functioning very well yet, but it's there. And that last three months or so are used to help the baby grow and finish developing. It is possible for babies who are born early to survive these days. There are babies born very, very early that can survive, but not without problems. Because quite frankly, a fetus is not ready to live outside the body. And some things we can fix, like problems with breathing, that can be fixed. Some things we can't. A lot of highly premature babies, for instance, have very, very delicate circulatory systems. And with the added stress of having to live on its own, these circulatory, they could have strokes, they could have bleeds. There are so many things that can go wrong if a baby is born early which is why most doctors recommend that women should do whatever is necessary to make sure they are pregnant at least to 38, 39 weeks simply to give that developing fetus the best chance that it has to make it. So nine months, quite a lot of development from a single cell dividing madly to an eight or 10 pound bouncing baby. A lot of work to do in nine months. <laughs>